Hello, hello. It's Big Cheds. It is Thursday, uh, September 22nd, 2022. This is going to be a replay of a Twitter spaces I just did uh, from today. Um, these are great conversations where I get to hear from you and great questions are asked. And if you're a new trader, if you're just trying to learn, these are, these are fantastic. Um, so this is going in the playlist, uh, Twitter spaces. This will be number 14, right? These, so check all those out. Um, want to remind you to check out all my playlists as well. And um, anyway, I'll just get this thing started. I'll be here in the chat room, um, not the whole time, but I'll be here as well listening. So if you're, you're here on the replay, thank you very much. And um, I'll check in with you um, along the way. So let's get it started. What's up, everybody? If you're just joining me, thank you. Uh, give it a few moments. I'm going to get this spaces started. I'm going to tweet it out and I'm going to um, add a tweet. So give me just a moment here. Okay, join BTC, and one, one moment, folks. Give it just a moment. Uh, I'm going to get this started from Big Cheds. Consider. So uh, if you're listening here right now, if you're listening on the replay, then thank you so much. Uh, what I do is I take these spaces, conversations, and I upload them to my YouTube channel for safekeeping. Um, that's of course, Chad's trading on YouTube. There's a ton of free alpha there. If you're just kind of getting started trading, you know, I've got the free version of my book, of course, trading wisdom, which is available on Amazon, but you get the free version on my YouTube channel. Check out that playlist. I have the masterclass tutorial playlist playlist, which is really good to, you know, figure out how to set up your chart, basic, um, you know, trade setups. And then I recently did more of an advanced masterclass and it's all free. So check that out. Market updates. And if you're new and if you're struggling, like you need to listen to these, these spaces, these, um, what, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to bring people up, just regular folks like you. And I, I want to hear from you. I want to hear how you're doing. I want to hear like what your questions are. We can kind of just talk about the market and, uh, these conversations are just incredibly constructive, um, they're open, honest conversations. Um, and so if you're new and you're, you know, like I said, if you're struggling, listen to them. This will, this is the 14th conversation that will be on my um, YouTube channel and just hours, you know, on a long drive, just listen to all of them will really help you. So, um, th this is boring with me just talking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you folks up into the conversation. There's a little button here in the bottom left, uh, where it says like request to speak. It's like a little microphone button. Um, like, don't be shy, like hit that button. I want to hear from you. Um, I want to just, you know, let's just talk. It's a lot, you know, on Twitter, you know, just a tweet, 200, whatever, 40 characters, 280, whatever it is. There's not a lot of nuance. So let's have a conversation. Um, ask your most important question and I'll get to you and I'll move on. We'll go to the next person. So I'm going to bring up, I usually bring up a few people at a time and I'll keep you on mute until I'm ready to, to hear from you and I want to hear your question. So again, hit that request button in the bottom left. There still are not enough people for me to start. We've got five so far. Let's at least double that. If you're just listening, you're hanging out and you're like, ah, I'm not sure of anything to say, just hit that button anyway. I want to hear from you. Let me know your thought. Ask me a question. This is your shot. I'm literally right here. This is your shot to ask me a question. Um, it doesn't get any better than that. And I love it. I love hearing from you. So I'm, again, let me handle mute, unmute. I'm bringing up a few people. Please do nothing until I call your name. And just please be patient. Until I call your name, please be patient. And let me handle all that. All right. Let's start out with Mr. D uh, Fishtube, DGen Moons. Hello, sir. Yo, Good to speak on? with you again. No kidding, you've been to the, you've done that before. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, um, uh, I always comment on your mighty. <laughs> ah, it's a little early in the day, but I might. You know, I usually wait till noon. I got ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. I'm on a clear head too, my friend. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Coffee. Um, I got coffee though. So. Yeah, I got my yerba mate, so I'm good. Good. Um. Yeah. No. Just, dude. So what's up? I just gotta thank you every time. I gotta come up here and like. Sweet. Like, I've been following you since 2018. Wow. And, uh, the spaces for me was the little bit of nuance I needed to really, like, mm. I was, like, 90% of the way there and still just getting chopped up, like, just yeah. making bad mistakes. Like, yeah. 
and and like I knew I had bad habits and I'd write them down, but like in the in the heat of the moment, like it would always get me. And like just the couple things I asked you, it just like set me straight and it actually gave me a level of accountability. Like so I knew if I come back with the same shit, you'd be like, dude, you didn't like you didn't love change it. what you were doing. <laughs> so like I, I did it. make those changes and like thank God. Like I'm in this bear market and I'm just like surfing it instead of just being crushed by the waves. Like I can't like emphasize enough anyone listening, like there's so much content Cheds has, you probably can't even consume it all at this point, I would say. My man. So look, I love it. First of all, thanks for sticking around that long. I mean, I've evolved, you know, since 2018. Sounds like you have as well, which is great. Um, if you feel like you're in control of your risk now, right? Like you're defining your risk, right? And that's like the, the what's most important is to kind of feel in control. And it sounds like you're doing that. Yeah. And the best part is like, you were like, yo, if you're in a trade and you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to like, you don't have to be stuck there. And it, for whatever reason that happens a lot, like you get in a trade price, mo- sorry about that price moves away from you. And then like you, you feel trapped and you're just waiting for like to get back there. But like the, at the end of the day, yeah. you could always cut that loss. And then that mental and emotional energy you get back, it allows you to reset and like take a step back and you're not just sweating under the pressure of that trade you feel trapped in. So that was huge. Great advice. I love it, brother. So fire away. What's your question, man? I'd love to, to, to get another, another one in here. I appreciate all the feedback, of course. Definitely. Um, so, all right. So I'm looking, I'm, I've been really, really patient. Like I will take a trade, get stopped out in this like chop. And so now I've been waiting since 2K. Like I missed the move up to 2K, like the bigger part of it. So I've been waiting since yeah. I get that on ETH. And I'm like, okay, I've been waiting for the retest here of this 1280 level. But yeah. like we came down yesterday. I'm like, okay, we're, we're about to go into my level. Should I start buying? And I, I just didn't feel right about it. So I, I, I hesitated yeah. and waited. And, and I kind of psyched because I was going to buy it like 1250 yesterday. And then this morning I woke up and saw like, oh, shit, it's going up. And then I was like, I don't, I don't think so. And then it dropped again. So like how likely mm-hmm. is it you think we bounce from here or do you think we go back down the low part of the range like thousand bucks and just sweep that yeah i think you've got a good a good sense of of that um i think and you know the the best case for bulls initially would have been a quick bounce off that level and we didn't really get it so for me and i get that you're like if you're not sure and you felt uncomfortable like do nothing that's really good i think ethereum now given kind of that it's it it, it didn't initially bounce as strongly as we wanted to off that level I like switching to kind of um, just a, a pure, um, just go 1300 long trigger, right? Because if it's going to go to 15 or 16, it has to pass 1300 first. You can kind of look at everything in the 1200 range as chop, right? Because, you know, my initial thesis would was long, you know, really 1270, 1280 with like a 1250 stop loss. And I see some vulnerability here. It very well could bounce from here. But rather than trying to get in at 1240, 1250, 1260, getting chopped out, I'll just go 1300. A little bit more conservative, key psychological level. I'll use that for my trigger if I want to go long, right? I'll, you know, I'll, I'll move it up a little bit, right? Just to avoid the chop. You've got to kind of anticipate a chop range and then try to find a way to to, to get out of it, you know? Um, that's what I would do. And downside, definitely. I mean, if it doesn't hold here, like a thousand, you know, you know, 1050 is definitely in play. So I think that's kind of how I'm approaching it. All right, dope. And and then if if, if you all right, so say thirteen hundred's a trigger, and this is actually a problem for me, so this might be helpful. Like on breakouts, I always get fucked because like I, I'm like I see it and I'm like, all right, here, I'm gonna take this, you know, more uh better, you know, not better trade, but like more more confidence in it. And then I get in, put my stop loss, get stopped out because it, they sweep those stops and then it goes up anyway. And Do I, it again, I'm, always, I I'm afraid to buy back. Like, you, what you can try your thesis at maybe two or three times. If, you're, if your trade thesis is revalidated, you can try again. And this is why it, it, it's valuable to enter light. Have a kind of a light position, a quarter size, a third of the size. You know, you don't have to jump in all at once, too. So if you get stopped out, it's okay. You can try again. So just like a smaller position generally is easier to manage. So, so, so size down a little bit. And then be willing to get stopped out and try again, maybe two or three times. But if, if it's still chopping that third time, then whatever level that you think is an important level, it's now a less clear signal because it's chopped through that. Like you want the price to respect the level. You want it to be bullish above, you know, bearish below that kind of thing. So um, that's how, how I would approach it, man. Size down a little bit and, um, you know, be prepared to try two or three times. 
Um, and that's how I would approach it. It's great to hear from you, man. I'll move on, but uh, All right. check in next time, buddy. All right, that like I, I like that approach. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go uh, ZE, my inner health. What is up? Hey, how's it going, Chad? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, really good. Uh, you're the best thing that came out of crypto banter for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love those. I love those guys, even though like our analysis is different. Like, yeah. still like good to me. And Rand's had my back. And I know like people, some people don't like him, but Rand's had my back. So yeah, they hit, they talk a lot of shit, but I do I do like Rand and I like what they're offering. And so, anyways, you're you're someone that came out of it that I continue to tune into and appreciate. Thank you. And I, like, I just really like your bearish sentiment. You know, during a bear market. It seems pretty logical to me. People go like to just talk shit, but it's a bear market. So yeah, yeah, having a bearish stance makes sense. And I think to me, I'm just, I don't know if it's a question, maybe a reflection for you would be valuable. But to me, if I just zoom out, all I see is a lack of US dollar liquidity. And rather than looking at a million different measures, it seems to me risk, you know, like crypto specifically, where is it going to come from? You know, I just don't see anything outside of like range runs until we have a shift of, of macro. And I'm, I'm trying to understand yeah, how there could be another view and what you're, if you have an opinion on that. I mean, look, well, it's about, are we talking about opinions or are we talking about facts, right? The fact is the price. The fact is the price. If it can regain loss support, you know, everything else is an opinion that we just do. We just talk while we're waiting for the price to do something. So, yeah. um, you know, macro is fun to debate, um, but like, it's just really about the price. So, um, you know, but here's what I would say. What would like what could change the, the, the trend? What could change things around really is kind of that the gist of what you're you're you're, you're asking. Like, yes. what? All right. You need volume and volatility and capitulation. You need like a shock. Mm-hmm. Like this downtrend is so strong and or, the sell offs have been neat and orderly. Yeah. You know, the, the failed bounce in February, March. And then we had just had another one on mean reversion to 25 K. It's been that resets everything. So you can continue lower. You need like a, a crate. You need like a 10 K candle, a 10 K yep. daily range candle. You need people giving up. You need volume and volatility. So like, I've been like kind of waiting for that. Um, Me too. There's no bottom without capitulation. So. Yeah. I've been tuning into a lot of people and it makes a lot of sense to wait for that real flush out. Yeah. Um, wait for the I've been intuitively product. like, I mean, yeah. we're in an undervalued area. So part of me wants to just continue DCA, but at the same time, then we could drop 50% more. And I just think that my intuitive, my sense, my spidey sense says, just be patient, man. I hear you, brother. Thank you for stepping up, man. All right. Yeah. Thank you for, for Appreciate, all you. Appreciate you stepping up. Folks, hit that request button. I want to hear from you. Um, Crypto Boat, you keep unmuting. I'm going to have to remove you. I think you need to fix your mic. You need folks need to let me handle the muting uh, and unmuting. Uh, let's see. Utsav, Romani, it's great to hear from you. What's going on? Hi, Shed. How are you? I'm good, man. What's going on? Uh, all good. I just had one question. Uh, I wanted to know the uh, how, how much extended h and can go, like helium. What do you how see? How much what? Uh, helium. Helium. What do you... Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You want to know what? You want to know like what I think about the chart? I also want to know not only the chart, but fundamentally and the news that no, came no, no, in no fun- day before there yesterday. Fundamentals. That's irrelevant. There's no such thing. These are these are all garbage nonsense. These are vehicles for speculation. There are no fundamentals. Okay. What do you think about the chart? Like, do you see it any sucks. upside? Because, yeah. It sucks. It sucks. It, D- oh, delete, okay. it, delete it. Delete it from your watch list. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Go play something else. Don't sit around in these downtrends. It's not. I mean, it looks like a lot of the market, but just why? Why, you know, if, if this, here's what I'll tell you. If you don't want to miss, if you think helium has like future technology or like whatever, set an alert on your phone. If it ever gets above like $12, $13, then you can look at it again. Right? Okay. Okay. It's going to yeah. have to pass 12 or 13 to go up to 50, which is the prior okay. high. Right now, it just looks like a slow bleed downtrend. Um, it had that really nice bounce in September, um, and that yeah. was kind of drifting lower after that. I mean, I'm not. It's just a downtrend. I'm not going to play it. Um, I would just, uh, I would just ignore it unless it gets above twelve or thirteen dollars. Yeah, I, I did not follow it from the beginning, but once mm-hmm. in all in one episode, uh, Chamath Pelyapita talked yeah. about it that yeah. the, it has a good uh, scope of going upside. Yeah, yeah, that would be a reason to sell it. Yeah, if he's talking about it. You don't want to, anytime a big person, you just don't trust those people. 
Okay, all right. And plus, all right. he's got a terrible record too. You look at that guy; he's run all of his stuff into the ground. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, come and, on. And, listen well, to the price. Thing. The price is your. The price is the only teacher. Focus on the price. Listen to what it's telling you. Everything else right. is already baked in. That's the final answer. Okay. All right. Uh, can Can you tell me one more? Uh, sure. Coin that is R V. Which one? R V A R. A R O A R. Yeah, A R. I know that one. Let's check a look. R V. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It, it is a, a storage. Uh, this thing. Yeah. Protocol. Yeah. It's so what do you, What do you like about it? Uh, what do you think about the upside? Like, it does it have upside? a good potential? Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, what do you mean? It's just a downtrend. These are downtrends. All right. Like, okay. It's just, it's just something I'd look at and I wouldn't play. It's just if I wasn't in this and I looked at it, I'd just move on. It's not, okay. it's not good. Unless I'm looking to short, I'd say if mm-hmm. it bounces to like $14, $15, you want to look to short it. All right. Okay. I mean, don't only think long. You have to like, you can't, in this environment, if you're only looking to long stuff, you're going to get killed. Okay. All right. All right. You got to go with the trend, not against it. Right. We're still, there's still too much froth and excess in the market and we're still dealing with that. Right. Right. So you think the bottom is not yet in for BTC, right? Um, I, I probably not. I'd say it's like 90% not in. Uh, what, what, what is the level that you expect? Like, is it 12 you to 14,000? You see my Twitter account. There's no, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. No it, question, it comes to around right? 12,000, right? Just fo- focus on what I tweet and you see, you know where I'm at. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put Thanks out videos many times. All right, take care. Thank you so much. All right, Crypto uh, Boat, why don't you try again? Crypto Boat, what's going on? Tell me about your Euro dollar short. How's it going? <laughs> Everything is working out. Yeah. How are you doing, man? Good. Talk to me real quick. What's yeah, up, man? Um, I know you hate RSIs. I know we don't use it, but yeah, I've, yeah, I've just noticed that on the four-hour chart for okay. BTC, yeah. There is like a resistance at the 50 level. Yeah. So I don't even, I don't even have RSI. That. I'd have to add it. To even answer your question, I'd have to add RSI and I'd feel yeah. dirty, but I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, okay. I know. Um, I have a question like, yeah. is this something question. that you can just watch and be shorting from there? No. I've seen Hell like no. Hell no. Like Hell no. Hell no. You never, no, you never generate a trade based on an indicator. Okay. It doesn't matter. These are second. Why? Focus on what the price is doing. It's yeah, like, yeah. Like, price, no, no, only the like, price. Only I'm the price. talking about with the price, like when yeah. it hit that level, because I've seen that. Yeah. This is like the third time that it has rejected as soon as it gets there. Yeah. With the price, like looking at the price, going to the lower time frame, looking for my entry. Okay. But like, it, it's just something that I've noticed, and I wanted to ask if I can just look at it. Listen, let me let me try to say it again in a different way. You can use indicators to to confirm an idea, which is generated by what the price is doing. But your converse, but what the way you're phrasing it to me is, you're generating your idea from the RSI. You have it backwards. Okay, use okay. it to confirm your idea, not to generate one. All right, brother. All right. Thank you, man. Good to hear from you. Keep on rocking. Thanks. Thank you, brother. Be good. All right. Sorry, I skipped over you. Um, A R B Z, Bro Crypto Bob. What's hey, going Chad. on? Hey, Chad. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing good. What about you? I'm doing good, man. Are you like a um, like a real estate agent? That's my guess, based on your picture. No, it's just a <laughs> no, it's just a shit posting account. So. Oh, okay. Good. All right, so what's going on, man? So my, I mean, it's pretty hard to predict the bottom, right? So what I've been doing is just uh, yeah. getting on big dips. For example, I got in at uh, Ethereum price of uh, twelve hundred eighty, which is not the lowest, but not bad. I'm basically focusing on just selling calls against my position. For example, okay. uh, fifty fifty dollars uh, above my uh, break even. Okay. So, you know, I can generate some money out of that. But my main question was, like, a lot of people predict, like, crypto going down to, like, 10K and, uh, you know, 12K, which is, like, 50%, 45% below current prices. And in 2018, like, you like you couldn't see many people, you know, with that kind of uh, downside prediction. And mm-hmm. it just kind of bugs me, you know, will a lot of the people just get it right this time or, you know... Oh, it's not well, going to happen. Thing, which yeah. people, you know, I, this is interesting because 
like I, I pay attention to who was right before, not mm-hmm. like who was wrong before. Right. I was on this podcast with a guy. Um, I think it was crypto Mitch NL. And he was saying like, everybody was wrong at the top. So they're going to be wrong here too. And it's like, what the hell is that? Like, don't focus on the people who were wrong before to defend like an idea. Now, like focus on who knows what they're talking about. Who's following the trend. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, like, can we go lower? Yeah. Will we go lower? Probably. But we can still double double bottom here, you know. But I think if we double bottom here, it's with a lower low, not a higher low or a flat low. I think if Bitcoin bottoms in this range, it's going to need to hit like 16, 16, 5 and create um, a stop loss trigger off that first low. I mean, it's the only way I think we bottom in this range. But it's just if you look at the chart and if you're not, if you were looking at any other chart and you weren't like a diehard Bitcoin maximalist, you'd say, okay, it looks like it's probably going to here, 12, 14K, like pretty much 12K. That's where the support is. Major high time frame breakdown. Price is really just, you know, slow bleeding below the weekly 200 or below the prior all time high. It's momentum, it's direction. Bears are in charge and there's major support in that, you know, down there. So it makes sense that people would be talking about it, you know? Um, so it's easy for people to say, oh, now, because everybody's talking about it now means it's probably not going to happen, right? But, like, I've been talking about it since March, right? When we were at 40K, because that's just a logical area for the price to go there. I think we just have to not focus on what the people who were wrong before are saying now. Like, that's just, I don't get that. Like, it doesn't do anything for me. Those are just, you know, focus on the people who can follow a trend, who really just look at it and tell you what it's telling you without trying to, like, I don't know, whatever. I just, that irritates me when I hear that everybody was wrong at the top. So, you know, nobody can possibly know. It's like, that's total horseshit. You were wrong, right? Because you were greedy and you refused to pay attention to what the price was telling you. Look at supply and demand. Think about momentum. It's probably going to 12K. It doesn't mean it's definitely going to 12K. But if it's not going to go there, it's going to have to bottom, I think, with a lower low on a double bottom. Because you need panic. You need more people giving up. We haven't had our um, sentiment bottom yet. So you've got to kind of think about sentiment as well. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, brother, man. Thanks for stepping up today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step on, but I, I, uh, I wish you well. Thanks, you too. Appreciate it. Just a quick reset. I'm Big Chad's on Twitter. I'm the author of Trading Wisdom, um, which has been a wildly successful book. I have almost 15,000 copies sold, which is ridiculous. Um, so I have a free version on my YouTube channel, Chad's Trading. Um, tons of great free videos. I actually have another book I'm about to publish um, in the next couple months, a trading quote book. It's a book of all quotes, one for every day. And then I kind of write up my favorite quotes, quotes from each quarter. That's coming out in the next couple months. Um, I'm, of course, a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live. Probably have some members here listening. It's the best in class um, educational platform for crypto. We have literally a world class team. Um, I've been doing twice a week market updates there for four years and I don't miss one. So anyway, that's my reset. Um, I want to hear from you. This is a casual, you know, conversation on what is it? Thursday. Uh, I got a little time here before I have to do some more stuff. So I wanted to hear from you. I want to bring you up, hit that um, request button in the bottom left, the little microphone icon. I'm going to bring you up. Let me handle the the mute and all that good stuff. But I just want to hear from you. So um, don't be shy. Next up, we have Eric. What is up, Eric? What's good, Chad? How are you, man? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I got the rain. I'm hearing the rain outside. It's good for the grass and the plants. So I'm Hell happy yeah, man. I guess you live in the Northeast. I do. So what's good? Hey, man. Um, so I've been listening to you <clears throat> for quite some time, mostly during this bear market. Not really a trader, but in, you know, it's really interesting the balls that you guys have and the discipline that a lot of people kind of take part in. Um, so I've been learning a little bit about, you know, the, the trading market and all that, but really I'm, I'm a long time like investor, I guess. Um, so I wanted to hear like what you would tell someone who was like a no coiner or if you have any opinion on that. A no coiner. Yeah. What? there's nothing wrong with that. So, right. So would you lean towards like, having someone trade more in the in the market where the equities are or in the market where there's a like crypto i think it, dep- it all that matters is whatever you're trading is what you know i think whoever, if you're going to trade you can pretty much trade any market as long as it's a liquid market um 
there's enough enough volume that makes kind of the support that the candlesticks work, make this you know support and, and uh, resistance work. Um, what my advice would be if you want to trade a market, study that market. Don't bounce around um, and have like a tight watch list, five, six, seven, eight plays in that market, and just watch those and really understand those plays. Mark out the key levels. And then that's your beginning point. And it's going to take you a long time before you master it or be, get really comfortable and confident. So, you know, that's what you got to do. You can't just casually, oh, I'm going I'm to become a Forex trader. Or oh, now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to trade, you know, spy options. Or now I'm going to like whatever. I'm going to trade Ethereum futures. Whatever you're going to try to do, just um, pick a market and, and just drill down. Like you have to get good at something, you know, by putting in time and focusing on that. So you can tra- I trade a lot of stuff. doesn't mean I'm great at all of it, but. I'm trying to become great at all of it. And I've got enough time in the game that I've, you know, I feel like I've, I've um, comfortable in multiple markets. So I'm trying to just push myself, you know, but I wouldn't start out that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's just more accessible to, to do the crypto markets in terms of um, it's leverage 24/7. trading. It's 24 seven, man. Crypto is yeah. fun. That's the best thing. So, but if the given that it's 24 seven, it means you should never rush into anything, right? You can always just wait for a great setup. Yeah. There's always something else to play. It's 24 seven. Yeah. And one other thing, I mean, you mentioned a little bit about the bottom, right? You were talking about it. Um, yeah. Would you be, would you say you're more, you were more successful during the, the bull run or the bear, this bear market? In what way? Successful? What way? I mean, my I mean, trade- you're, you're, I guess my trading, in, in my dollars. trading, my trading slowly gets better. My trading gets better every day because I work on it every day. Um, but um, I feel like my analysis, because I, for whatever reason, Bitcoin's been incredibly easy to analyze since like, you know, November. And um, I think it might have surprised me a little bit on the upside, on the move, on the move up to like 64K. And um, like in that, in that 2021 80 day rectangle. Um, when we broke out of 30k i was like a little bit late like i didn't get back into like 33 34k so i missed like a little bit but i still wrote it right um it's just but it's just been so it's been textbook bitcoin has just traded like straight out of a classical charting slash japanese candlestick uh textbook since november so for whatever reason it's been remarkably easy to analyze from a ta standpoint and so i don't know if that's just i'm getting better or it's just the trend is that strong now. It's a, it's a really strong trend. So um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I just got to get better every day. And that's just the bottom line. So yeah, appreciate it, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks Take for care. stepping up. Good to see Alex in the house. Alex Fu, nice to see you again. What's going on, Alex? Uh, hello, Chad. Uh, how's are you? How are you? I'm doing good, Alex. What's up, buddy? Yeah, okay. So, um, actually, I have a question about Ethereum. Like, uh, because now Ethereum is actually at, uh, um, it's like at the uh, critical point. Yeah. Because before that, we were thinking about, like, uh, taking a long here. But since this, uh, it's showing quite strong continuation to the down. Yeah. So, I'm kind of, like, confused. Like, should I just continue with, uh, you know, my thesis? Or, like, should I just uh, observe first? Well, look, give me a plan. I'll tell you if it's a good, if what I think about it. Just formulate okay, so, a plan right now. So it, uh, basically, I just uh, took all my profits of my short trades. So uh, my initial uh, plan was to uh, open a long trade on uh, 1250 and then maybe like uh, maybe a short, uh, short term long trade. What's your stop then, loss for that? What's your stop loss for that trade? <clears throat> 1209. Okay. But now I. Basically, just cancel the trade because, like, I'm hesitating because, like, oh, yeah. I, I see that the trend is actually like, you know, quite strong trying to break down. Yeah. So, like, for but you, listen, like, here's two things. Two things. I agree <laughs> with you. I see what you're saying, but also, it always feels like this in the moment. Anyway, like, it always feels like, you know, if it's at a thousand, you say I want to buy. Well, not Ethereum, but let's you know, let's call random coin. If it's at a thousand, and you're like, <clears> I want to buy at eight hundred. When it gets to eight hundred, you're you're freaking out because yep. it just dropped. So yeah. Um. It's for me, it's shown, and I answered this question earlier, Alex. I don't, I think you might have came after, but it's shown a little bit more weakness than I would have wanted it to initially show in this range. So I've shifted my strategy. I'll, if it, I'll go long if it breaks above 1300, I'm not going to buy the weakness here. I want to see a little bit of strength first. Okay. That's how I approach it. It doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. I'm just telling you a way for me to, to, to define my risk and to give myself a clear, 
you know, <clears throat> level, a bullish above or below. I'll go 1300 and I'll look at everything in the 1200 range as chop. Got it. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Another fun, fun question. Like, okay. uh, do we have a chance to see you on YouTube without your mask? <laughs> um, uh, yes, I am. I'm actually BitBoy. <laughs> oh, okay. That's me. You see me. My name is Ben, <laughs> ben whatever my last name is. But you see me every day. So, all okay. right, brother. All right. Take care, man. Good to hear from you. Okay, take care. All right. Thanks, folks. I love getting through these these um, these um requests. I see some some old folks, some new folks in the request. I'm going to try to get through them as quick as I can. Um, Utsav, I already talked to you, so I won't be able to take your request. Uh, Copy Trader, what's going on, man? What's up, Copy? Hey, Big Ched, just want to have a massive shout out to go. I love Bitcoin Live. I love what you do, and I love your tweets. Oh. They're fantastic. I love you too. <laughs> <clears throat> and I just have a, a quick one. I know fundamentally you are a TA. You believe in the charts, but deep down in your heart, do you believe digital assets is going to be a mainstream asset class? And do you feel that Bitcoin at some point, yes. whether it will be two, five years, will hit over 100K? Obviously, you're not, you can't predict what happens. And would you yes. agree on the ECA method? I'd say yes, yes, and no. I don't think anybody should be dollar cost averaging right here because we just broke the weekly 200. I feel like DCA is dead right now unless we drop to a lower level or go up higher. Um, because, So I agree with yes and yes, right? Yes, I think we're um, definitely a future of digital assets. But like I suck at fundamentals, but I know enough like intuitively like yes. And then 100K, yeah, but I think 100K is going to take two bull cycles. I don't think we make a new all-time high in the next bull cycle. Um, and I think we're in – now, here's what I think. And I think we're in danger of – I think we're probably heading to the low teen, you know, low like 12, 13. But there's a danger we, we, we break that support and maybe turn 10K into resistance. You know, I think we would eventually break out of that, um, you know, after, after kind of a period of time. But I don't think it's, it's smart to dollar cost average here, given how likely it is that we're going to be in like the 12K range shortly. 12, 13, 14K range. Now, um, there's certainly no guarantee. And I can also argue that, well, why not just buy a little bit every week? Because that's the advice I gave my cousin, you know, two years ago. And then and she's probably still doing it, which is fine. You buy a little, that's if you, you don't have time to, to study the trend, right? But like, um, I don't know, man. We are, ma there's some major warning signs in the weekly chart. I'm not going to ignore that. Bitcoin's only existed in kind of an up only, um, you know, super risk on type of environment. And that's now being expressed. We're seeing danger of the long term trend rolling over, right? The weekly MA 200. And just people have been programmed to think it only goes up and it always drops, you know, after it drops 80%, it always makes a new high and all this stuff. And it's like, I just want to tell people, like, nobody owes you anything. Like, there are no guarantees. And like, so you don't just dollar cost average into this like brutal downtrend. Um, I think. You know, I plan to start dollar cost averaging, you know, 14K and lower. Um, I just think it's too high here. That That's how I would answer those three questions. Thanks so much. Really appreciate your time, man. All, all the best. Thanks to you, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. All right. Ahmad. Ahmad Arbaz. What's going on? I'll get you next, D. Ahmad, what's going on, Ahmad? A A Z Ahmad. I'll give you a few moments to see if you can uh, step up. Hey, buddy. Hello, hello, Chad. How are you, man? I'm doing great. How are you today? Uh, very good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, Chad, just a small thing off topic. I'm from Pakistan. Just a few moments of off topic. Then I would come to the questions. I'm from Pakistan, and I would like all the participants here to just pray for uh, our country because it's been hard hit by flood. I don't know if you people know about that or not, but uh, it needs your prayers. Prayers Almost for Pakistan, three, three, absolutely. 300 prayers million people are, uh, you know, affected by the floods and uh, prayers are needed. Absolutely, uh, thank you for bringing I would that up. Ap appreciate everyone for that. And uh, second of all, uh, I'm following you for like one year or so uh, since I've been interested into crypto. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, huge thumbs up, man. You have been a teacher. Oh. 
in life and also you know in charting and also in life because <laughs> you have been a fighter man you have been a fighter thank you it's absolutely awesome the, the things you have went through with your health and yeah. wow wow huge thumbs up to you all the health and uh, best of luck to you for your future and uh, now for my questions uh, i follow uh, you of course i follow nebraska gunner i, yeah. I know you know him yeah and uh, uh, i follow elise and i also follow uh, a person uh, whose account is lucky chart ape and uh, he uses a lot of those parallel channels and uh, you know fixed volume profile fixed range volume profiles okay i just want to ask you uh, i've seen your tweets about uh, those uh, the charting on uh, uh, trading view using the logarithmic version and the arithmetic versions yeah uh, i know the difference between them but uh, what would you prefer i know uh, you had a tweet because uh, you were saying in crypto you prefer the logarithmic version yeah with the volatility yeah. yeah yes yes can you explain a bit and i'm using you know the parallel channels if you apply parallel channels on a logarithmic scale it's different if you apply it on the arithmetic scale it's different i just want your insight you on that about parallel like rising like diagonals yes 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 yeah, yes yes don't yes, do it yes. don't do it don't do it just don't okay. do it okay you know just follow the uh, horizontal support yeah. and resistance like you say it's just that's where supply and demand are because that's where the market yes. participants have have bought and sell, sold and like Yes, yes, yes. You know, yes. somebody who buys buys and 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 then their position's red and then there's a bounce, they're probably selling bad break at break even, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like like a diagonal okay. line is like a meme line. It's somewhat of a trend, but it's not actionable. I mean, you can look at it, but you got to you got to laser focus on horizontals. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, log, yes. Log in linear, log like for for when it's more volatile and on longer time frame, generally you want to use the, the logarithmic Okay. 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 If I'm trading for you know one or four hours, then log is uh, good for four hours and one day chart. But for one hour chart, I should use the uh, arithmetic version. You know, I just use log. I just pretty much use log. Stop. You don't need to switch it around. Yes, me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Right, just keep Because I, I saw I saw there. another tweet of you. You said if you are changing your uh, you know switching between, then the problem is with your bias. Not if with the chart. If you find yourself, if you find your, this is a quote from my book, which is coming out soon. Yes. If you find yes, yourself, yes. and this is not verbatim because I'm not at my computer, but if you find yourself constantly changing the time frame to suit your bias, then immediately exit yes. the trade. Like if yes, you're like, yes. oh, I don't, you know, I, I really want to be long here, but it mm. broke support. Let me go to the five minute chart and like, and just mm-hmm. hope the hope that the five minute hammer candle will make a difference. Like no. So, all right. Yes. Great questions, all right, all great, right. great topics, prayers to everyone there. I'm really glad you brought that up. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much. All Thank right, you, brother. So much. Thank you as well for all Thank your you time so work. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, that's it. We're all people. We're all sharing this space together, which I think is fantastic. Let's get uh, D up in the house. D, what would you like to say? Yeah, what's going on, man? Hey, right. buddy, good to hear from you again. What's up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I know you're you're a big trader guy, and um, you know it does. Uh, I, I'm not worried. You know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not too much of a trader, but uh, you know, you're calling for these uh, pretty low prices, and to be honest, I, I'm surprised. But um, you know, I'll be grateful for it. Um, you know, I think I think you had a good point about you know Bitcoin's kind of been in a bull market since its existence. We haven't really seen how it reacts in a recession. Um, are you? Yeah, like I don't know what's what's your bottom call, right? I guess that's kind of my question. You know, where where do you think we sit? And uh, no ball. way to know, no way to know. I mean, you just yep. know where there's you know where there's going to be a, where there should be a good battle. You know, um, it's just war, and it's there's a battlefield. It's almost like a football field, and I'm keep pushing towards the you know, the other end zone. You know, if there's major support at the twenty yard line. You know, that's twelve twelve k, ten to twelve k. Um, it's just a you could see a big battle. You would see that. Even with all this bearish momentum, it should bo- it should bounce if it gets there. You know, it doesn't mean that's a bottom call. You can't predict. Nobody, there's no way to know. Um, you know, but I can tell you, it will be accompanied with sentiment bottom. It will be accompanied with unbelievable despair, abject, just people uh, despair and panic and everyone giving up. Like it's just, I don't, I haven't seen it yet. Right. Um, in every bottom, I've seen that. I got big Jonas in the house. Jonas, what? Do you have any thoughts on this great topic? 
Yeah, Chad, uh, thanks for having me on. Can you hear me okay? I'm in the bowels of Home Depot right now. You can't say bowels on, on radio. Uh, apologies. Uh, listen, I want to just respond to the last guy uh, from Pakistan. And, uh, of course, thoughts and prayers for him and all the Pakistani people. Um, the differential between logarithmic and linear is only um, a visual representation of the chart. What what throws people off is when they do, sorry, horizontals or diagonal lines, right? And then those end up changing if you bounce from logarithmic to linear. Looking at a ha huh, larger, well, not necessarily time frame, but a larger frame of time, right? Heading back to 2018, 2017. If you look at that chart on a linear scale, you're not really doing uh, the move justice because it's kind of looked like it's had this insane pump, which it did a few times, but the true scale of the pump is can, can only be demonstrated in logarithmic scale because it takes account the other pumps in correlation and um, relativity to the current pump. And that gives you more of a clearer perspective onto how meaningful compared to the previous ones, this actual move was. Momentum, right? You're kind of momentum. momentum. So don't use, uh, don't, don't draw a diagonal on linear and then switch to log and then redraw your diagonal and try and figure out which one works. Now, the reason that the price action tends to respond to either of those uh, points, which aren't the same, is because, yes, that's where the market has, uh, you know, scribbled in, oh, this is the, the downside channel of this thing. Therefore, you know, it might be a, a smart uh, idea to, you know, enter in at these price levels. The same when, like, you know, the MA100 or 50 is touched for the first time, a lot of eyeballs on that, you know, expecting a move based on the first touch of that thing. Um, now, in terms of the current question in regards to, he asked what your low target was and everything. Um, you know, it's kind of an irrelevant question for two reasons. A, as I said many times, you're not going to know when the bottom is in. You're not going to, in terms of being able to truly confirm it, right? It, it will probably take over a year after it actually happens before the consensus is like, oh, yeah, that, that was clearly the bottom, right? Um, this will take time. And then the other thing is, and you kind of mentioned the dollar cost averaging aspect of the situation. That's still really the best way to play this market if you're a true believer. Now, to be a believer, you have to basically have the idea that Bitcoin is kind of basically stay around. Um, oh, hello, Jesse. Um, and um, you can basically, um, um, you know, uh, Except the time frame that it will take for Bitcoin to basically, uh, as you said, restart that next bull market. And just the last thing I'll say about what your comment was about the next bull run will be a, a lower high, basically. You know, that's what we saw in 2019. Arguably, we had some sort of an echo, echo bubble where Bitcoin went from 3200 to 14000 almost on the dot. It was a huge move, right? Five X or baby. Huge move. But it was still a trap, right? Because that 14K went all the way back down uh, to 4K. So you got to keep these things into perspective that historically speaking, we tend to get a chance of a false bull market that ends up leading to a not necessarily lower low, but a chance of the test of those lows. Awesome, Big Tone. It's great to have you, D. Thanks for the question, D. Did that kind of uh, get a good answer for you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Just a quick follow up, if if I could, um, just on the DCA part. Um, yeah. you know, I think we've seen uh, about a seventy percent drop. You know, the average, uh, you know, in the past has been about eighty five. Um, so I guess like my quote unquote strategic DCA is like kind of DCAing underneath that two hundred week moving average, even if it's not, you know, quote unquote the exact bottom. Um, just quick thoughts on that. And well, I mean, if, are you DCAing under a rising 200? That's fine. But what if it starts to roll over? 
flatten out, you know, right. it, because in the past it's been like a week or two below it. Now we're, you know, we're below it. Like it's, right. it's, you know, we're in, we're in major trouble. So, um, I mean, if you're, if that's your strategy, you could DCA down to a thousand dollars. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, maybe that's fine, but who knows? I just think we got to be careful that, um, we're expecting the next 10 to be like the last 10. I think we, you know, yeah. we got to be really careful. No, hundred percent. Yeah. Good. Right. good. And there's lots of risk and, uh, yeah. Thanks again. Appreciate Thank it you so much folks hit request. I'm going to bring you up big chonish. If you want to speak in any of these, just either raise your hand or jump in, but I'll keep moving, you know, me- moving through, uh, next up we have crypto noob stampede. What is going on? Stampede and folks hit that mic request button in the bottom left. We want to hear from you. Stampede, it is your turn. Hey, Cheds, thanks for having me up. I appreciate sure. everything sure. that you do. Um, it's it's good to have somebody in the, I guess, in the crypto space who will call it like they see it. And it's not like I, I guess part of my question is really for the people like who maybe are looking for, um, uh, I guess, a council of people to be following, quote unquote, just where you have differing opinions that we can value because we don't want to be following just one um, person that's meeting our outlook of what we think might happen. Are there certain people that you feel are worth following just to look at their levels and um, and validation on like your thesis at the moment for where like the possible bottom, I know you've mentioned is around 12, what upside or downside, you mentioned kind of the possibility of that double bottom if we hit around 16 potentially, but what upside do we need to hit at least potentially to get to invalidate that low you see as a possibility? All right. So if you look at the top of the spaces right now, there's two tweets. I just um, attached one, which is a friend follow I, I made back in April. And there's about 10 or 15 people on there who are like super legit, like technical analysts. So check that out. And you can also see like a link to my YouTube up top. So by the way, anyone listening, please consider subscribing. Um, I don't want to get too hot. I don't like to get too hung up and like now, now you're asking, I'm, I'm looking at a bottom area and then I need to like predict, you know, the move up from that. It's like, that's so hard because it now, every time you go out now I get to then I got to predict uh, the bottom after the next top, after the next bottom, I'm, you know, I'm trying to predict. It's like, you know, the further you go out, not just in time, but in terms of trying to predict a bounce, a dip, a, you know, a back and forth move is, is just really useless. Um, it just depends on, on, on how the price responds in that area. And if I'm thinking of a, a broader upside move, I need to flip the daily MA200. I think that's around 28K. So if, you know, if we double bottom 16, 17K, I, I, we would need to get back up above 28K. If we get back up above 28K, now I'm looking, I'm looking in the 40s. I'm looking 42, 43. I'm looking something like that, right, for an upside move. So it's, it's level by level. It's congestion area by congestion area. You can't look past these congestion areas. The way Bitcoin is consolidated on the way down and paused, consolidated, continued down, paused, consolidated, continued down, you have these areas which we have to work through on the way up. So we can't just look past them. We don't know what, what will happen if and when we get there. We have to trade level by level and manage our risk accordingly. I appreciate that. I think too many people try to say what they think is the prediction and which direction and whatever. And I like that you just call it those levels. So I know that question seems funny, given that I realize you do that. But I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate you, man. Um, I came up. I came up from the people. Right. I'm still here. You know, I still feel like I'm a noob, which make, keeps me honest. You know, I keep pushing myself to get better. I've made all the mistakes and I talk about them honestly because, like, I didn't want to make them anymore. So I enjoy doing this. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Again, if you ever want, uh, Chonis, if you want to jump into any of these, you just speak. Otherwise, I'll keep rolling. Um, Triff, T-R-E, Schmuckerdoodle. Schmuckerdoodle, what is up? What's up, Cheds? Thank you for doing this. Um, I'm not Thank 100% you. Sh- yeah, of course. I'm not 100% sure of your background, but I was curious if um, – in your opinion, if there was like a best market for a beginner to start, whether that would be like Forex or crypto or stocks, or is it all kind of the same? That's a really interesting question. That's a really interesting question. Um, that's an interesting question. See, what I, I might even say crypto is a little bit easier because you don't have gap up and gap down. Like with equities, you get like 
gap up, gap down. And that, that like, it's very easy for the trade to go against you and for you to not be able to react before, like, damage has been done. Sure. So and I also I don't like, want to do – I just want to trade price action. I don't want to be doing research. I don't want to be looking up, you know, yeah, statistics. Yeah, research is a waste and, of time. Research is a waste of time. I think you just – like, the price will tell you if the research ma- – like, the price does all the research for you. Sure. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, um, so I would trade crypto and I would trade the, whatever has the most volume, like, like consistent, like that. I wouldn't trade the, the like fringy stuff. I just trade the top, whatever the top, like 10 or 15 coins are on, on market cap and just analyze those charts and know them and practice with really tiny amounts of money and then trade journal every trade and kind of start to get a feel for it. You got to get a feel for it. Yeah, of course. And I actually heard some interesting advice, um, about back testing because, you know, we look at crypto all the time. We know what things are doing. So I, I heard about if you're going to back test, you may be back testing Forex because you're not, you don't know what. You back know. test what? Like back, back test, test a crypto strategy in Forex or back test? Yeah, back test the strategy in Forex. Why? Why wouldn't you just back test it in crypto? Because you might have kind of like an idea of like mm-hmm. when a drop is happening or like, oh, you know, we just hit 69K, mm-hmm. you know, and this, you know, we're going to drop you know, soon. Or, well, you know. You, well, you know, you know how we spotted at the top. I mean, hopefully you've seen my videos on this on YouTube, the free videos. Like I've, it's just been well, you know, dissected like a frog at this point. But, you know, we had the up thrust, we had the outside bar. I mean, classical charting, brother. All you need is read the two textbooks. Uh, I recommend uh, the Shawbacker uh, classical charting and the Nissan um, candlestick book. And then either watch the free version of my book or just buy it. It's all like it's just the price. The trend will show you like you either hold support or not either. You know, you either break resistance or not. You look at upper shadows where you see selling. You look at lower shadows. You see buying. You look at major moving averages that are usually support and then they're lost. That's a sign of momentum changing. Um, It's all there, man. So um, just stick with one market. Don't try to back test one market to trade in another. Um, The same technique works in every market. Right. But some markets are harder because I think the gaps that you see um, even in uh, that you see in, in equities make them make it harder to trade than crypto. So, all right. All right. Thank you so much. Cheers. Jonas, you're a multi-market trader. Can you speak in this a little bit? Yeah, I think uh, you just go balls out on OTC, right? Um, yeah. It's... <laughs> what is OTC though? For people who are listening, let's just give, give, sure. let them know um, what that is. For those of you who have seen the movie Wolf of Wall Street, uh, these are the pink sheets. These are the dog shits of dog shits. Same with uh, Boiler Room, uh, Med Patton. You know, these are penny stocks and they are, but. Crypto. And what that has to do with is the micro cap aspect of it. Um, you know, there are cryptos, obviously, that are, you know, uh, from a per coin uh, price uh, cheap relative to their pairs. But there's a reason why they're cheap. It's because there's billions billions, and billions of them. And um, um, there's a similar correlation to OTC where where you can buy stuff for like a tenth or a fiftieth or even a hundredth of a penny per share and exponentially uh, have that move. So there's a similar uh, in terms of risk versus reward um it doesn't there's no answer you know you, you can try for forex you can just play spot on, on, on stocks uh you can even play options uh but if you're starting a new asset class or you're trading it number one key is just to start small you know there's no reason why you should go all in or be aggressive uh, on an asset class that you're not familiar with trading and haven't really had a chance to uh, study. Um, so that's kind of the advice I would have. But in that, you can actually become a very skilled trader if you pick something and you study it and you watch it and you see how it moves and you're able to basically identify an edge to it uh, and trade. And that edge uh, takes years to form. That's Big Chonis. We got Fibbo Swanee, who's another great teacher in the house. Fibs, you any thoughts on what's going on, buddy? Yeah, man. Hey, what's up? Um, the uh, I, I think I heard the question, but I, I think well, I have something. How you doing? That... How are you doing, by the way? Everything good? Oh, I'm I'm doing fine. And and uh, congrats on getting close to 50k on your uh, on your deal. That's awesome. 
Thank you. Uh, keep it up, man. It's awesome. I love the education you guys are putting out. Um, the uh, what, one thing I was I was thinking was when you're looking at different markets, uh, what I, what I have found over the years is with like crypto and forex. Um, what the reason I think tech like if you're going to really test technical analysis, um, I, I really like the forex and crypto for one of the main reasons is uh, when you go to any kind of currency. There's so many different variables that go in on a fundamental side of things, and it's really, really hard to forecast a um, a fundamental break-even fair market price for uh, for currencies, and you know, even for Bitcoin, it's really hard to find that fair value when you're looking at it from an economic standpoint. But when you look at it from a financial standpoint, and you look at the classical, uh, you know, TA patterns and and TA rules and guidelines. Um, I feel like you can really learn a lot from looking at the Forex market and the Bitcoin market because uh, people are going to rely a lot more on price action than they are fundamental action uh, at this point in time. Because it's like it's like trying to figure out like what the GDP of a certain country is. There's so many different inputs that it's hard to get an output. But when you're looking at it from a measuring a psychology standpoint of what's happening in that market, uh, crypto and Forex are a good markets to – uh, back test your uh, TA strategies on. So hopefully I answered the question right. I, I just got on and, and heard it, but I could be just rambling and not even make it sense, but um, I thought I'd help out a little bit there. Yeah, I love I love having you on. Um, for those who don't know, Fibs is a veteran trader, professional trader. He's been doing this a long time. He um, joins spaces, my spaces every once in a while. So every time I see him, I'm happy to have him uh, talk. Let's see. Uh, I can't pronounce your name, but I'll try. Ola Sabikan, Olu Wafemi Michel. What's up? Ola, Oloa. I'm good, Shed. In fact, you really tried trying to spell out the name. Thanks so much for bringing me up. How you doing? I've been, I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing, Shed? Good, buddy. Yeah, I started following you some couple of months, and to be sincere with you, I appreciate all your nice work. I must commend you. You are a kind that I can't really explain or really say more about. Your selfless work, you. the, your tweet, in fact, it has been very helpful. I came into this space not quite long, though I have no tutor. I came myself. I just have to learn how everything works. Uh, fortunately for me, when I came in, it was very nice. But I think uh, what really happened to me was I was unable to control my emotion. And that was what resulted yeah. into my big loss in the crypto space. So I came at uh, probably last year, I mean, end of uh, 2020, stroke 2021, when the market was still very good. It was favorable for me. But I was thinking that it's going to go up or things will keep skyrocketing, not knowing that there's always up and down. But actually, I can tell you that I really made nice loss. <laughs> I really lost a lot. But yeah. uh, I think since I've started following you, you've uh, been a source of inspiration or motivation the way you uh-huh. bring out things and every other thing, I really appreciate it so much. Though my question has partially been answered, because I'm curious, I want to know when is BTC likely to bottom out before I enter the market again. But so, I think from what you've said and uh, from people I've been listening to and what you suggested that you cannot predict exactly, but anything from 16.5 or 14 or something will be a good entry into the market, if I'm very right right. So great. It's great to hear you. Um, and so listen, you know, I've had a lot of big losses that have hurt and they've taken me out of the game for a couple months even. Right. Um, yeah. And I've blown up. I've blown up several accounts like to zero. <laughs> so like I get it. And you see that in my work, you know, and um, so, you know, I, I get it. I empathize with that. And so you have to but you can't you can't let those losses define you. Right. It, what should define you is how you respond to them. Um, every time I had a big loss, I went and I read another textbook, right? I, it's like, I want to get better. And so I tried to add a skill set. I, I tried to work even harder. I had to take some time to lick my wounds, but I came back. So let's cut right to the point. You want to, um, at this stage, and you've only followed me for a little while, you've you got to soak up my YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And I even made order on your books. I've ordered them on Amazon probably in two or so. I mean, in tomorrow or two days time, I should get everything delivered to me. Good. Yeah. So listen, thank you. And, and so I, I think you should soak that up. You'll do well. Um, you know, the, the bottom, it's not about the price. It's about how it, 
like what what we should see at a bottom wherever it is we you know what we should see is before the bottom we should see volatility right we should yep. see some kind of crazy volatility um while we're bottoming we should see incredible panic and despair right um we need to see that sentiment and then um you'll see like a long lower shadow or like mm. a big volatility candle um bitcoin is major support at 12k you know, it's got a little bit above that 14K it could bottom there. It could bottom at 16K. It could bottom right now. It's easier, but it's unlikely to bottom here. And then more likely the lower you go. Um, it, but it's just momentum. And the, 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 the downtrend has been so strong um, because it's stopped, it's consolidated and then continued. And you can do that pretty mm. much forever. That's that's what's scary. I mean, it's not going to go to zero, obviously, but like a strong trend will pause and consolidate. Right. It, you know, and when it does that, it allows the trend to continue and to keep going. Right. So How that's about the, the fact thing. that when the bottom comes, you're not going to want to even buy it. It's going to be so scary and bloody. Yeah, that's and it. counterintuitive to what your instincts will want to do. And that's typically when bottoms are actually formed, formed when when the bears uh, are, are too scared to buy and the bulls are capitulating, you know, that moment is when we typically bottom. Um, but, and then that's, that's, that's the thing you have to ask yourself too, is, is how do we get there? You know, everyone talks about, let's just rip off the band aid, Let's have a waterfall cascade crash in, in the Dow and the S and P and the NASDAQ and just get it over with. But I don't think it's going to be that, that easy. This is a, a, a stair stepping declining market where we have these vicious bull market rips and you notice how Bitcoin's been uh, significantly weaker on its, um, you know, bear market rips than some of the S and P stocks and what ha and some other altcoins and stuff like that. Um, but the, the, the eventuality of this is, is uh, lower highs and lower lows. Uh, and we're, we're on the way and the fed. And I've said this many times is the fed, is purposely trying to kill the housing market, uh, the stock market, and the employment market. And uh, they're trying hard, and they got plenty of more, you know, arrows in their quiver uh, to, 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 to fire at this. And to see what's happening with the bond market and everything, um, we're not near a, a bottoming moment because of the uh, continuation of what's to come in the coming months and until the fed chooses to do any kind of a pivot or or a slowdown in its quantitative tightening and aggressive rate increasing uh the, this is a terrible market to be in you know risk on assets and the correlation between the nasdaq 100 and bitcoin is just it's stunning it's they're very correlated all right great to have you great uh commentary um Julian, Julian, uh, King Julian, are you there, brother? It's your turn. What would you like to say? And folks listening and not requesting, it's great to have you as well. I just encourage you to next time hit that microphone request button. We'd love to hear from you. Julian, what's up, buddy? Hey, Chads. Uh, hey, come in peace. Uh, I love uh, a lot of the work you've done. I've read your book. Um, I'm actually doing CMT as well. And um, Awesome. Yeah. How's uh, that going? Uh, it's been fun. Um, I've, I've been trading for a while now and, uh, I, I do want to, uh, if it's not the space for it, then that's totally fine. Um, it's just, uh, your, your uh, constant riffs on fundamental analysis and so on. I just find it very interesting. Um, yeah, I definitely. do find price action is, is good and works sometimes, but I think yeah. there's a space for both. And yeah, yeah I, I was curious if you were up for, um, that debate or chat at all. Well, it's not much of a debate or a chat. It's, 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 I mean, it's like the chicken and the egg. I mean, um, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm about 95% serious the way I talk about it. Okay. A little bit of it is, is for effect, but really not. I mean, cause no matter what, like the price either holds support or not. Like, I don't need to hear about how like the price is going to go down in the future because X, Y, and Z. It's, I don't care how good your argument is until it happens. Like what we're just talking about it. Um, so, I mean, that's just how I see it. Like, there's no way to convince me because unless it ma I, I know that unless the price moves, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, that's pretty cut and dry. So, like, what's the point of you even debating it is what I would say. Right. That's, I, my, I, that's right. my point. Um, yeah, I think 
um, just kind of not really debating. It's just um, I, I found uh, in my trading a lot that you, especially with trend following trading, you, you're really only in it when there's a trend. And the yeah. hardest things about finding changes in the trend is is just that. And the, the compliments of doing proper research or understanding how certain assets move mm -hmm. or what would cause a move is what allows you to find those changes in trends and allows mm -hmm. you to create those proper thesis on those trends and what would cause uh, adding to also TA and price action, what would actually cause it to start moving sideways or to have those trends and just yeah. understand, getting a better understanding of what the trend uh, would change that trend in general. I get that and I respect that. And I think um, we have to find, the, you know, for you, that might be the best method. And for me, it's kind of, you know, my method, like there's so many ways to crack an egg. Like we don't have to all be the same type of trader. Um, like I happen to use sentiment instead of fundamentals, right? That's my compliment to the chart is sentiment because I, I get a, I get a read on the market participants. You know, for me, that's way more important than trying to read like a balance sheet or just, you know, looking at like the trend in commodity prices or whatever, whatever tightening interest rates, like or whatever, or, or whatever's going on outside of the chart. It's so speculative. Um, you know, so I don't deal with that, but I, people are important to me because they are the market participants. So I look at sentiment. So I get that you want to use FA. I'm going to use sentiment. And that's my method. Uh, Fibbo Swanee, what would you like to say in this topic, Fib? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got a couple tidbits to put in here. Um, one, uh, technical analysis. Um, when, you, when you look at it from the, the three basic tenets of basic TA is markets discount everything. Price moves and trends, and um, history tends to repeat itself, and that's basically the fear and greed that we're trying to measure in the psychology. So when there's nothing in the in the premise of technical analysis that brings in any type of fundamental analysis at all, all the news, financial, geopolitical, whatever in the heck you want to bring into the market, when you when you're analyzing technical analysis charts, you need to be in a vacuum and disregard everything that's happening in the fundamental side. You want to look at price action. You want to measure psychology. You want to measure sentiment. And that to me is the way to go about it. Now I'm not discounting f fundamental analysis, but you do your fundamental analysis in a vacuum also. And then when the technical analysis matches up with the fundamental analysis, which is done in separate. And when you fuse those two together, if they're, if they're both managing the same thing, then that gives you a lot more comfort to go long or short based on whatever your analysis is. So to me, when people start to bring in fundamental analysis in the technicals, it just, it, it just clutters the brain and it makes you make emotional and bad decisions based on different things that are happening. So that's the way I approach it. I, I actually, in my day job, I'm, I'm the head TA guy at a global uh, research and analytics firm. And I do all of my technical analysis separate. I have fundamental people on the other side, uh, and I don't I don't get with them until I am done with my analysis because I don't want them to give give me any bias on what I'm trying to measure in my analysis. So that's the way I approach it. And again, like what Chad's was saying, everybody has different ways of doing it. Uh, but when you really want to do technical analysis, fundamental analysis is not in the definition. So you, you got to kind of break that apart and look at it in a separate way. That might be one of the best explainers I've ever heard on this uh, <laughs> topic, Fib. That was really good. Um, I'll let you briefly re respond if you want, Julian, and then Chonis, but we'll move on after that. Uh, you know, I think that's how we'd respond. It's a great topic. It's really a great topic. Thanks, Fibs, for stepping in. And Julian, thank you, man, and good luck with CMT, brother, all right? Yeah, Chonis, you can't ignore uh, on-chain analysis, right? It's been spot on since the beginning. Um, true. True. The uh, and I say this very. Oh, but no, but the, again, um, I'm not. I'm not saying to ignore it. I'm saying to separate it from the from the analysis right. and look at it afterwards. Right. You, you can't say you know B Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation, therefore it's worth a hundred thousand dollars a coin. Right. You know you, you you can say I believe it's a hedge against inflation, but you can't correlate that to a specific valuation. Uh, and, and I think that's what a lot of the on chainers learned. Uh, this cycle is that uh, you can't use, um, and I, 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 
I put chain analysis kind of in the in the in the FA uh, sense, e- even though it's it's technical uh, data. Uh, it, it, it still tries to set a narrative of valuation. And the only way you can set a narrative of valuation is through TA. Um, now, stocks versus Bitcoin, you can argue, well, there's a differentiation. Uh, stocks have earnings. Earnings have historic forward PEs. You can derive a, a reasonable valuation of what a, a stock price should be based on that. It's not always accurate. You have a, you know, a PE of an automaker, Tesla, that's like 100 times uh, more valuable than a Toyota. And yet Toyota makes significantly more money than Tesla. So even with that fact, there, those things don't obviously play out. But I agree with Chad. He constantly says, you know, you can say all the FA you want, but the price is the price and the chart is the chart. And in the end, that's kind of that Rosetta Stone standard that in the end is the only thing that is kind of make you or lose you money. That's that big Jonas. Uh, Shills, what would you like to say, Shills? Thanks for being patient. Chain Shilla. What's going on, buddy? Hey, what's up, man? Thank you so much for bringing me on, man. Uh, Real quick, so uh, I got a confession. I've been somewhat anti TA for the past two years. How uh, dare you? I, I I got into crypto uh, 2020 in May, yeah. and I got a, I got a question for you regarding this. So I'm, I'm looking at Bitcoin Live, and I'm curious because you, uh, Pentashi and Trader uh, SC, have kind of uh, given me more glimpse into the benefits of TA. But yeah. I got a question for you. So when I got in. Uh, I come from more of the tech side, and I found that I would capture these exponential moves. Uh, zero experience with TA, but coming from a tech side, I would have these moves where I would be up, uh, like my first Uniswap play was a 61X that eventually rugged. But uh, so learning risk management, I have found, was massive along with, with the uh, fundamental analysis. And I just have a question. Are I, I almost don't want to learn TA because I feel like it will mess up that part of me of capturing the exponentiality of crypto. Um, and I was curious, how do you deal with that? Uh, you're obviously a, a much more uh, TA guy. Uh, you said yeah. that. And how do you capture these, like, since we're in such an exponential type uh, field, how do you get and stay for the 50X, the mm-hmm. 100X? Okay. And I'm just so curious listen, about that. That's a great topic. So. Um, But, you know, if but if you jumped in in a bull market and that's all, you know, it's hard to, you know, that everyone's not to like I'm not trying to be insulting, but everyone's a genius in a bull market. Right. Sure. That's it's the mistake of thinking that um, I can just keep doing this no matter what market we're in. And T.A. helps you learn what kind of market you're in. Um, There's something called the 200 moving average on the daily chart. And it's the the average, the simple moving average equally weighted, weighted over 200 periods. And I generally, you know, if it's an uptrend, the price is above that average and that and that average is rising. That's a, that's a confirmed uptrend in classical charting. So, I, you know, Bitcoin Live, my students, I'm like, just play stuff above the 200. Like, I don't want to play downtrends. You're, you don't want to be fighting a trend. So, um, you know, my thing to you would be to ask you is like, how do you define this? How are you defining a good idea or a bad idea? Um, you, you, your sample size is, is so small and you're new to the market. I think it's a danger of you placing too much weight in certain things. Um, whether you do FA or TA, you do need risk management, which need, totally. means every idea needs to have a fail point, a point where you can say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to take back 80, 90 percent of my money um, and just say this idea failed and move on. Right. So question for you on yeah. that. Yeah. So in regards to that, if I had multiple times that my coin would drop, I, you know, I was, uh, uh, they drop 50%. In yeah. that moment, I probably would have sold, I'm guessing, if I was more TA focused. Okay. But I held and it went much higher after that. I in luck- a bull market. In a bull market. In a bu- that's very true. And so I lucked out. I sold uh, December 4th uh, everything. And I feel like there was because there was people like you and Pintosh that, that I had ignored twice before in <laughs> September of 2020 yeah. and I ignored in May. Yeah. And I knew third time's a charm. I yeah. was not going to ignore. Um, yeah. So, well, it, yeah, go for it. Well, look, Pintosh is really good. 
look, when the times are good, then, then the times are good. And there were a lot of people who were deified in the bull run. A lot of people who were made to be seen heroes. And then afterwards, you know, the emperor had no clothes. Yeah. These, you know, so um, if you've been around multiple cycles, guys like Pentashi, I mean, this guy's no joke. Pentashi's no joke. That guy's in like my top five. So, you know, um, but if you've been around, you've been through bullish and bearish markets. I have a quote from my book. It says, um, if this is your first bear market, just make sure it's not your last. Yeah. Right. Which means you got to survive. And so you have to survive multiple markets. You need to know what market you're in. Good markets make every, you know, um, make you look great. But bad markets expose your trading, bad trading habits. Like you can get away with bad habits in a bull market. Right. So don't just, you know, you've got to button down, man, if you want to survive is what I would say. Yeah. Button down. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Cheers. Great topic. Cheers. Chip, what's up? Chip? Yeah, I, I, I want to add to that real quick. Um, then, the, okay. Well, let, yeah, Fib the, uh, let Fib go first. Go ahead, Fib. Oh, yeah. Uh, OK, I'll, 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 I'll say something real quick. Um, Hi, my definition of TA. My, yeah, my definition of TA is the art of identifying the force of an emerging trend until the weight of numerous indicators and principles show or prove otherwise. We were talking earlier about trying to find bottoms, which I think is an act of futility myself uh, to actually try to find the bottom. So when you look at technical analysis, going back to those three tenants again that I actually talked about earlier, the second one is price moves and trends. So like what Cheds was saying earlier, when you're looking for a bottom uh, per se, you're really not looking for a bottom. You're looking for a pivot point or reversal, and you're looking for signs that, that, that we are in that possible reversal stage. So you might not be capturing that, that bottom one third of the market, but it's that trend that you're going to capture as it flips into that next one third. And then you might miss the top by a third, but it's that main middle one third that is the, that's the trend that you're going to capture. And when you're saying uh, how to capture those exponentials are, if you're in that trend, regardless of which way you're going bearish or bullish, uh, you can ride the same, you can do the same analysis going both directions. But if you're if you're in a market where you're in a trend, then that's where the risk management comes into play. When you're starting to put in uh, trailing stops to mar to capture your profit, those kind of things. So it all it all comes down to risk tolerance and risk uh, uh, management to know how to capture and ride that trend, so you can actually get that exponential uh, by using TA approach. So because that's to me the, the TA is all about if you're a good technician. You know when the reversals are happening, and you're, and you're going to be able to capitalize on those reversals. Now, when you find the bottom, you might get lucky and find the bottom, but the goal is not finding the bottom. It's finding that reversal and then riding that trend and having your risk management to capture that trend. So that's that's the way I, I kind of approach that is that if you're using TA, you're you're looking for trend, and and that's where your that's where your profit's going to be is in those trends. So. That's why I look at it. What, what, what were you saying, uh, Jonas? Oh, oh we, I think we lost down. Jonas. We, we lost him, but he'll, he'll jump back. Thank you, Fib. It's always great to have your perspective. Um, our next guest is actually Crypto Fib. Crypto Fib, what would you like to say? What would, what's your question? Crypto Fib underscore. I what? think he's still on mute. He is? Yeah. We'll give him just a moment. We'll give you about five seconds. We'll move on to the next one. I do like the last of his name, though. Fib, I, I know, like that. Let's, uh, Chonus wants back. Let's get Chonus back in the house. Um, while we're waiting, um, Prince, what would you like to say, Prince XP? What's hey. going on? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. Uh, thanks for all you do. Really appreciate it. Um, been following for a while, and uh, great analysis. Learning a lot. Uh, question on just quick uh, kind of current – Price action. Uh, looking at the big four-hour upthrust from yesterday, yeah, uh, and and you know long tail on the daily. And curious yeah. where your thoughts are on that follow-through. Did we see the follow-through on that four-hour upthrust when we hit yesterday's lows of you know eighteen one, or are, are we expecting more downside and more follow-through from kind of those uh, from the that price action? Yeah, I, I'm just, it's, it's, uh, I know it's a tricky spot. It's tricky because right we're at the lower Bollinger band and you, you wouldn't be surprised to see some type of a, a relief rally, um, here, I think, but I just, I, I'm not, I'm not bullish, certainly below 20 K. 
Um, you know, so if I'm going to go long for a trade, I'd rather see it flip 20 K and I go long there. So I don't really, really need to speculate here, you know, between 19 and 20 K I'm not going to mess around. Um, so what, then, of course, what about, what yeah. about like breaking through the, the daily EMA eight, which is, I think set like 19 six or something. Yeah. Does we were trying to get you a little more. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends. Are we going to close above it or just briefly penetrate it like we did yesterday and, and came back below? Right. Um, I'm not going to go long or short based on the EMA 8, but I'm going to watch it for signs of, of weakening bear trend. I'm really going to execute my trade probably more on a horizontal level because then I can define my risk a little bit a little bit cleaner. So, you know, I might go long above 20K. Um, I would go long if we dropped quickly, like it's like, like $2,000. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd want to see like some volatility first. Um, cause absent volatility, we're in the trend, which is a downtrend. So I'm looking for, if I want to go long, I will either want to see a bounce and a recapture of a lost support, or I want to see volatility to the downside and an overreaction. That's another way I would go long. Okay. Yeah. Great. If, can I, can I ask a quick follow up on that? Sure. Um, when you talk about, you know, going long, looking to go long, looking to go short, yeah. um, your trading style, um, you're, you're not really looking like intraday scalps. You're kind of Absolutely. longer. Okay. Oh yeah. I'll, oh yeah. Um, yeah. Right. If I can finish a trade in like an hour and then go have dinner, that's great. Yeah. 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 But you're, but you're, you're, you have, you also have no problem sleeping on trades. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Cause I have, um, ideally I've, I've got my stop loss to break even before I go to bed, you know? Um, but if not, it, you know, I'm not going to, it's not a big risk. I'm never going to have a position that will keep me awake at night because it's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You awesome. know, it's not worth it. All right. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cheers to you. Sean, it's good to have you back. And you wanted to talk about the last topic. Yeah. I had a little technical issue there, apparently. Um, so the previous speaker who wanted to make a comment about how he, you know, he got a huge uh, multi bagger in the last bull market and, he held through some serious pullbacks only to get rewarded for that. Um, so I listen, I have some bad news for a lot of p- people that that experience that we just went through like a year ago, um, that's not going to happen again for most people and for most assets. Um, and I can correlate this, m- my own perspective of uh, trading several bull market moments and seeing those kind of exponential gains um, only to, to, to basically see that, that old adage about the market can remain, uh, you know, a certain way more than, you know, or longer than you can be solvent as a trader or even patient as a trader. Um, those moves, and I think people are kind of hold on to that hope that, you know, they bought soul, they wrote it all the way up and they wrote it most of the way down. And if they just keep adding to it or if they're patient, then it will it will take them to the promised land uh, once again. Um, but uh, what happens is that the next time we actually have some sort of a decent bull market, uh, it, it tends to be new players on, on the, you know, Seoul wasn't around in the last, you know, bull run. So it, there'll be another coin. There'll be an, another investment uh, that will yield something like a huge return um so trying to have hopium in some of the the ones that ran the last time um you know a lot of times that tends to not play out and then you, you only have one um kind of moment as a trader to be um naively stupid to the point where you can actually make a lot of money uh my some of my biggest successes was my naivety not to take profits or to sell after you know uh give you ten dollars if you can spell that word (laughs) not this guy um very uh so you know you 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 have the experiences that you just assume that you're the king of the world and that you know what's happening here because you bought here and you held here and now it's up to here but um the, the more you become a trader the longer you actually trade for what you realize is that those moments are so rare and so few and far between that 10 times out of, out of 11, um, you know, they don't play out that way. And a lot of these vicious pumps uh, tend to always retrace. So my point about this is that this, the traders that were Kings of the world in the last like year or two, um, you only get one shot at that naivety about not knowing when a prudent time is to sell. 
And as you've already experienced it, now all these new traders have already experienced their first bull rush and now their first vicious, you know, bear market. Um, the next time this happens, they're going to have those scars, right? Those scars that they learned this time and the pain of, of holding, um, you know, major gains on paper only to see them vanish. And they're kind of think twice the next time about, you know, holding a coin or an asset as long as they did last time. And you can't go back to, to being like dumb, stupid and, and bright the way you, you, you were. And now there'll, there'll be a new crop of traders that miss both of these and will think they're the Kings of the world next time. And will succeed for a time being until, you know, reality sets in so you can't be a freshman in this anymore if you've already had a freshman year great to have you uh thanks for the the topic we're going to do just a few more and wrap it up um crypto fib not the host but the guest with the uh, yellow background picture what's last chance um crypto fib underscore are you there brother i'll give you about five more moments, seconds and we'll move on All right, Anon Cheney, what is going on? It is your turn. Anon Cheney, what's going on? Hello, guys. Hello. All right. My, my question is for FIBO and Sheds. I have a, a follow-up question based on what we talked about today. So what are some of the warning signs you always look for for a trend reversal and a trend getting weak in both, direc uh, in both directions, especially on a 4-H whether the market is trending up or is trending down. So I kind of always hear you talking about, you know, dojis forming on top or daily AMA, yeah. uh, the AMA nine rejections uh, uh, at a great, as a great data point and tweezer tops. So what are your thoughts on this? Thank you. Well, those are, those are a lot of topics. Um, well, first of all, have you, sounds like you haven't watched the free masterclass series I have on my YouTube channel. Is that right? Uh, I'm, I've been following you since November. I did watch uh, a couple of your videos, but no, uh, I could... specific videos. There's a there's a, a playlist called Masterclass Tutorials. It it teaches you everything you just asked about: volume, moving averages, candlestick theory, support and resistance, structure in your trades, divergence. It's everything you're asking me about. Is going to tell you how to st study the trend. So you you know, in terms of to answer your question, now definitely go watch those, all of those, please. Um, you know, what you're, what you're studying is you're listening to what the price is giving you in terms of data points. Um, you know, something like an 8 EMA is, is kind of a primary uptrend support where the price will, you know, if, when it goes up too high, too fast, it will come back and kind of tag that. It's your first level of support in kind of a trend that just broke out, right? Imagine it just broke out. That's, you know, the beginning of that move. As it continues to, uh, tends to consolidate further, it's going to hit your secondary uptrend support, middle Bollinger Band MA20. EMA 34, that type of thing. But you're also looking at um, prior highs, right? What you want to pay attention to is after a level is broken out, does it hold if it's retested, right? A trend that will continue, it will stair step. It will keep moving, go, go up sideways, up sideways. And then because it's testing support and it's holding, right? So if you see that it doesn't hold a level it should, that's a major sign of weakening trend. Your whole job is to ride the trend, profit from it, while you're watching for signs of weakening trend. That's price and moving average interaction. That's price and key support and resistance uh, interaction. Fib, he, he mentioned you as well, and of course, Tonus. But Fib, what do you, how would you answer that question uh, for our friend here? Um, I, I stepped away a second. I missed the question. So what, what was the how question? How do you know when the trend is weakening? Um, and you know what are some of the things you're looking for? He mentioned four-hour, but just kind of how are you – how are you looking for a weakening, strengthening trend? Uh, I mean, I, I look at it in, in probably a different way than a lot of other people do. Um, what, one thing that I'm looking for is I use a couple different indicators to um, really kind of look for the FIB levels to kind of correlate with what's going on in the psychology that I'm trying to measure. So to me, it's the FIB levels that are those major horizontal support and resistance levels that I want to see broken back to the upside or downside. So it, it kind of works the same. It, it's a different approach, but it's kind of what Cheds is talking about is, is really getting that 
that resistance or, or once like a support's kind of holding, you're getting that that new higher high. And if that higher high is happening on, on a break of a resistance point that I'm looking for, that would be a sign of a reversal. And and of course that that uh, support and resistance can come in on a horizontal trend line. It can come on a Fibonacci retracement line or an extension, or it could come on a moving average. Uh, it just depends on the approach that you're using and the strategy that you're applying to your risk management. But to me, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's it, mine comes from my, my Fibonacci retracements that I measure off of my indicators to where I think the sentiment is pivoting. Uh, so until that happens, I, I, I ride the trend until I see that happen. I know it's going to be a little tough to explain without pictures uh, on here, but um, but it kind of works the same as what Chad was talking about uh, with, with basically the break of those higher highs and lower lows. And if they are key, key support and resistance levels, that's the areas that, that I would look for to, uh, to trigger one way or the other. All right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Uh, great question, uh, Anon. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll definitely check out your YouTube. And I've been following you since uh, November of last year when you uh, sent out a tweet, a lot of warning signs. You know, I missed all this green back in November of last year right at the top. Thank you. Anyways, I remember that tweet, man. Yeah. yeah. It's stuck in my head still to this day, and it saved me a lot of money. Well, and I've been... it, you saved you money. Never. I don't want the credit or the blame, I, but you saved yourself money. So good work. All right, brother? I appreciate it. It's my third time here, and have a wonderful evening. I'm checking in from Addis Ababa. Oh, it's great to hear from you. Go watch the playlist, Masterclass Tutorials. That's your homework. Uh, next up, we have just a couple more. We're going to wrap it up. Um, Chance, can I answer that? No. Yes. I know he didn't say for me, uh, but uh, I feel I will take no offense in that. But uh, no, just, just, just a few thoughts about um, – uh, how to identify, you know, potential top or bottom. Um, there's, there's a tightening. So you talk about candlestick shape, right? And maybe a long legged doji, you know, represents a battle, right? Between the bulls and the bears. And then if you combine that with a decent volume profile, you know, you'll get some sort of this signal that there could be a turning point here. There's a, a real battle in the line about how much, farther we can go and you're seeing people taking profits but people at the same time are trying to scoop up the dip um, and that's kind of that first signal that you tend to get where you have a volatile candle that um, prints you know a tight doji body with a long leg down and a long leg up now the signal can be less meaningful on low time frames and much more a uh, chance of being stronger on the higher ones, of course. That's why I sometimes like to use Heikinashi when I do uh, daily and weekly uh, candle analysis, uh, because the way I use those to identify um, are we kind of hit a, a trend change uh, is the shape of that candle, which has tightened up significantly. And that's what you want to see. You want to see declining volume basic you know of that trend signifying either the buyers are weakening or the sellers are weakening uh combined with the sh shape of the candle and then for me recently i think sentiment not recently but at different times sentiment can can play a big part uh in that you know the uber bullish feeling on twitter or the uber bearish uh feeling but once we define what what market we're truly in Therefore, this one being, you know, a downtrend, you have to have the inverse to what we experienced in the bull market, which is you need to, to practice selling the rips, right? And instead of uh, buying the dips and not buying into or, or, or adding into, uh, you know, potentially higher highs or some sort of a breakout candle because in a bear market downtrend it's those slight higher highs that gets people interested in now taking a position that time and time again have been just these nasty bull traps that end up basically sucking in liquidity uh that turns out to be exit liquidity and that's the environment that we're currently in and we have to continue to recognize that bear market 
uh, bullish rips are quick, intense, and can really throw the bears off course. But they can fade so fast. Get the elevator up and the elevator shaft down. I love it. You got to take, got to pay yourself for a good idea too, right? If you get, if you get in and you get a nice bounce there, you got to take a little bit of profit at least. And that's why it's so hard in this particular environment to uh, swing trade. You know, if you're scalping or you're trying to swing and you got your trade in profit, you move that stock to break even at a minimum because it's just environment where you can't be cocky, you know, the way we were, you know, in, in later 20 and 21, where we could enter a position, feel strong in that position and let it ride for days. You know, we, we are just not in that environment at this time. And I think that's what's chopping a lot of people up. Great to have you. We've, we'll finish up with our last two callers here. Three uh, double, double zero thing. Three El Tor. Are you there? Thanks for being here. Hello, 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 chats. I am El Torete, El Torete. I am from Spain. <laughs> so that's probably why it's difficult to read. Uh, buena tarde. Uh, buena tarde. <laughs> buena, buena tarde. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's first to say Yabla that, that you are a gentleman. Hablame, senor. Talk to me. Hablame. What's going on, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> you can you hear me okay yeah 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 okay yeah so yeah just to let you know uh, I, I think you're a legend first uh, uh i look I, I love your your bull uh, <laughs> that you have in the background and your outfit that's and how you start Jonas's the videos bull. that's big chonis's ball <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's, it's a gift uh, but go ahead oh amazing amazing anyway so let's see i'm gonna put a little bit of explanation first to put the things in perspective and hopefully it makes sense. So I started um, in crypto in, at the beginning of 2018. You probably remember that. <laughs> and then uh, I started, so I was watching, I invested a little and then I was watching the charts and stuff, but I started trading uh, more deep uh, in end of 2020. So that's when I started like looking more, more in detail, no? because I am more in front of the charts. And now I and I don't have anything to say from that when I started. But now I am not the same. I am not. I I'm not sure what, uh, if it's correct what I am seeing. But I am not the same. Something different. Obviously, we are in a bear market. But there are things like, for example, I'm going to put it with one example that happened quite frequently. You probably are aware all of you uh, that we have some. I, I'm talking only about crypto uh, because I I don't watch the rest of the markets. But we have sometimes like a very clear hammers recently and in the past months, a, bit, a, like a candlestick, no, like clear hammers. And they almost now very high probability that it goes the reverse instead of like the intuitive, the, the, for, like, always it's been like a hammer then. You All right. We're losing you for a second, but I hope you can hear me because I, I have a lot to say on that topic. Are you still there? All right. Um, and everybody else, you can still hear me, right? Jonas, you can hear me okay? It's not it's not me, it's him. All I right. hear you as fine as I always hear you. All right, so here's the deal. So Japanese candlestick signals, a hammer, right? Small real candle body. A hammer is technically a spinning top. You need at least twice the lower shadow. Um, that's a reversal candle. You want to see it at the lower Bollinger Band to have kind of the most the quality of a signal. But you want volume behind it as well. So the volume on a candlestick helps you understand the strength of the signal. But you need to remember, Japanese candlestick signals are short-term signals. These aren't like, I'm going to go completely reverse the trend. They're short-term uh, reversal signals. So you need to look for context, where they are versus the Bollinger Bands, the volume behind them. I mean, also kind of what the other candlesticks around them um, are doing. And that's how you want to play that. Um, Moiso, what would you like to say, Moiso? We're going to wrap it up here. This has been going for a while. It's almost lunchtime. Um, oh, Mo are you there, M-O? Moiso? Hello. Can you hear me, Chet? Yeah. What's going on, brother? Thank you. Uh, hello from Costa Rica. And thank you for all that you do. You are a very good trader. Thank you, brother. So, uh, uh I have I have a question for you because I don't know how to how to get to that balance. You say you are a TA guy, okay? And uh, you have uh, showed that in your tweets very clearly, but also you many times you refer to market sentiment and Twitter is uh, bullish, so I'm 
<laughs> I'm fading this. So how do you balance the TA with the sentiment? Yeah, it's a confluence. It's a great question. The, um, you know, if you look at it, the sentiment has actually spotted the bottom, the top and bottoms better than price most of the time. Um, at least in terms of like, you know, the quote unquote good calls I've made on my Twitter feed. A lot of them have been sentiment. And there's just something you can feel when there's just so much froth, you know, that it's probably a top. And when there's so much panic, it's probably a bottom. So, I mean, it's just how my brain works. I think about, I'm like, I, I studied psychology. So I think about people and I think about sentiment. So that's just something I'm in tune with. Um, but it just helps me um, with the TA a little bit. But it's still, it's about the price and whether the price holds support or resistance. The TA gets the final word. But I'm definitely paying attention to sentiment, um, you know. Okay, so for uh, for for an inexperienced trader, yeah, uh, let's say you you were prioritized uh, TA. Oh, of course, oh, of course, and risk management is the most important thing. Is risk management because you're going to have to survive years of practice, and to survive that, you're going to have to manage your risk, define your idea, know when it fails, stick to your stop loss, use small positions, scale into your positions. You're going to have to do all that, all that TA and risk management. You know, get to sentiment later. I mean, that's, you know, that's like a later skill set. So, that's okay, what I mean. okay. All right. Wait, thank you. Thank you, Chits. Thank you. Um, Eltor, you're back. Sorry, we lost you briefly. Eltor, what's back? So, did you hear yeah. what I said or no? Yeah, I can't. I, I, I hear it partially. Sorry. But yeah, I think that's okay. I just wanted to mention that. And it also, yeah. I think that just the beer market is very. It's been it's been more difficult, no? Um, it's a, uh, for example, also with horizontal levels. Like every time an horizontal level gets broken, like with a full candle closure, like daily, four hourly, it's very likely it's gonna reverse. You know, it's more likely that it's gonna go down, that like, or, 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 or up. Trend is strong. Trend is strong, right? It is what it is. Trend is strong, brother. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of also panic, no? Like and no, levels no don't get hit. No? There's no panic. There's no panic yet. There's nothing. There's no panic. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, you'll thank you very much. Know. You'll know when you see it. You'll know when you <laughs> No, but I mean I mean in the day in the in the daily you can see the charts like the levels don't get hit if they people uh, try to close the orders uh, before the others, no? Uh, I don't know. I feel like that. Feel like that to me. I am more a scalp trader. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's much more difficult now to to stay, as, as the previous uh, speaker said, like, you have to be now, uh, like, uh, much, much smarter and, and take less profit, but secure things because people are closing before you. And, and that's it. Uh, it's, it's, it's war. It's war out there. It's war. It's war, so it's gonna get... Thank you for stepping up. <laughs> I, I'd say, listen, I feel your struggle. We're all dealing with that. Um, you know, tra if, I'll tell you what. Why don't you make your position smaller? I think it will be easier to do whatever you're doing, Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much oh, for the advice. Blessings, brother. Cheers. We're going to finish up one more. I saw that. Okay, go ahead, Jonas. What do you got? Do you yeah, got? I was just thinking about like, you know, a lot of people want to get positioned, right, for the next bull market. And if we think about uh, the last bull market, you know, two things come to mind. You didn't really have to buy the bottom. You know, you didn't really have to buy the break over 10K. You really didn't have to buy the bake over, you know, 20 K uh, to, to get a big bulk and a big piece of the bull run, right. Of 20, 2021. Um, there was so much meat on the bone, even after the breakout and the full send was clearly, you know, on its way. So I think people uh, spend too much time, uh, analyzing and agonizing over, you know, what's the bottom, when the bottom, do, have I caught the bottom? I think a lot of people thought they may have caught the bottom at 17.6, like what, three months ago? And there's a chance they're, they're still right, right? But there's also a chance that it was a good bounce, 17.6 to $25,000. That was a nice move. It took a while to play out and there was some all starts but it took a while but now we're back you know in the high 18s low 19s again so even if you caught that 17 6 are you really feeling as as comfortable and as as excited about that fact at this point 
uh, now versus when Bitcoin was, you know, over twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars. So I think we have to get away from, you know, where's the bottom? When's the bottom? How do I know it's the bottom? And what do I do if I think it's the bottom? And more focus on um, just the patience of waiting for a more meaningful uh, uh, risk versus reward market, bull market that we are not in yet and not even close to kind of being in. And I I think the sentiment about, um, you know, Bitcoin over the past few months that these could be value pricing based on where we had been in several, you know, coins and we're down 70 percent now 80 percent now so there has to be more value here you know we had some nice bounces on a lot of this stuff over the past several months but that's over with so let's just keep the understanding that um there's nothing to say that any value buying over the past three months has been uh, a winning investment if you're still holding on to that trade there was a time to take good profits off of that, what I feel is just dead cat bounce. And we're about to see, you know, if that plays out over the next few weeks, if we lose this this low we've established and keep flirting with it once again. I love it. That was a little bit of a um, wrap. You know, that was like your summary of the market. Save it. I got, um, I'm going to do one more and then I do want to hear you kind of wrap things up, both you, you and Fib. This will be our last guest. Vashon, what's going on, Vashon? Hey, Chad. Thanks. Uh, listening uh, with great pleasure and interest as always. Um, I caught your most recent uh, update on Bitcoin Live and uh, uh, learned quite a bit as always. So thank you uh, for everything. Thank you. Hey, um, this is just, I don't know, it's an observation uh, and, and a kind of a feeling. And it was sort of echoed earlier by, I think, another caller. Um you know, I'm looking just at the daily on on BTC USD, right? And and the volume since June throughout this last period is so much higher, kind of in general, than what we you know have seen for a while. Like it's 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 as if you know instead of getting a giant volume spike, there's just been this huge increase in volume for the last you know couple of months and so i'm just wondering you know if if that represents sort of a a shift or a change i mean you if you look at the last couple months the volume kind of on a daily basis is just so much higher than in the past i mean are there more participants or i just don't understand what's going on and and it and it kind of echoes that that question of you know everybody's expecting a big capitulation you know it just it from what I hear, right, like everybody and with what's going on with the Fed and, you know, Russia, like everybody expects the shit to hit the fan and, you know, moment to come. And then isn't that what everybody expects? So what if it's all sort of uh, happening? So it's like there's a guy, uh, William Gibson wrote a, wrote a great book and he talked about kind of um, this sort of moment in the future where um everybody was expecting an apocalyptic moment, you know, a moment where it hit the fan, but really it was, it was called, you know, it was more like a series of events over a long period of time just took the population down. It was the jackpot. It was like, it was, you know, inflation, it was plague, it was environmental collapse. It was all these things over a long period of time. So we, getting- is that like the frog in the water? That you turn it on slowly versus the boil? Is it- the metaphor yeah so so are we getting the jackpot now like is the last couple of months like this sort of moment that's happening in slow motion as opposed to that sort of big boom that everybody's expecting i mean yeah these are all this is fun speculation um i mean look volume right we have one you know monthly chart which i think i think you know me i think the monthly chart's too young to be used because it doesn't have a 200 i've talked about that but this is the same volume we saw, you know, on the way up from 13K to 60K on a monthly standpoint. So it's, you know, it, it's just normal volume for probably middle of a trend. I don't think this isn't bottom of a trend volume. Um, and look, I only speak from the way I see things and I'm always ready to be wrong. I mean, you know that. So uh, you need you got to shake this, this. This trend is so strong. You got to shake it. 
That's why I'm looking for panic. I'm looking for a 10K daily candle. I'm looking for a massive capitulation. You have the momentum is so strong. You need to shake it with a pendulum swing so far in the other direction, right? The analogy of the battlefield, there's a big hill um, in the middle of the battlefield and I go and I capture it from you, but but I, my whole army dies in the process. You counterattack. You get the hill that's, back, and now you that's go the ahead. exact same analogy I was thinking about. Who's the reserve army, right? Yes. that will reinforce the dip. And Michael Saylor, it's Michael Saylor. <laughs> There's not enough of them. Retail is being crushed. The free yeah. money is gone. Yep. People need to pay their rent to fill, pay their bills. Winter is coming. Um, they're 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 not going to have the money. Uh, to to uh, facilitate, you know, a big bottoming process, and oh, I'm kind of put some spare change into Bitcoin or, or whatever. Not in the volumes that we were seeing last year, and that's the problem. You might be able to win. You know, the bulls might be able to win a battle here or two, right? But can can they sustain the, the front? Can they reinforce the front with new capital? And in the sense that the valuation uh, can be sustained by the market participants. And just real fast in terms of volume, I feel that volume is extremely suspect. This, the, the retail trader isn't there. I think you're seeing uh, more whales have more domination in this market and they can throw around bigger momentum moves. So for a whale to buy and trade, you know, 100 or 200, even 1,000 BTC in a 24-hour period is not crazy. And that can kind of skew the market to make it seem like there's a lot more participation than there is. Retail is needed for a bull run, and retail is is hurting right now. Fib, do you want to address this and then, and just kind of wrap things up? This will be our last um, our last guest. And great to have you, Fib. Um. <sighs> I really don't have much on that um, when it comes to what you guys are talking about. You guys kind of covered it. Um, I don't see any different volume now than I did when we were going to the upside. So I don't see anything that would be a red flag to me just yet. Uh, I'd probably be more in the camp of seeing large volume with a huge ass candle to the downside, like what you were kind of talking about to kind of give that sense of a red flag. Uh, so I, I really don't have anything in that to add, but um, just to just to finish up um, again, thanks, Jeds, for having me. Um, I really enjoy talking to guys that talk and shop with people that know what they're talking about. It's always fun um, to talk to you. Uh, so I appreciate it. And uh, thanks, brother. Hey, man. Uh, keep doing what you do. Always great to have you, man. And um, Vash- Vashon, anything before we uh, move on? Did, did we address that for you? No, no, no. You guys are great. Just keep keep doing what you're doing. Looking hey, forward man. to the next. Appreciate you, brother. We'll talk to you Sunday, huh? Yeah. All right. Chonus. Big Chonus at Chonus. Uh, Chonus Trading on YouTube. Um, and the man himself, Big Chonus. What do you want to say before we wrap things up, buddy? Um, I guess we're heading into historically uh, one of the worst months for stocks uh for crypto in some capacity um which is the the late september to early october uh kind of time frame uh we're heading into q4 of 2022 uh you know a lot of people have taken some big losses you know on the books um and they're basically trying to figure out how they want to close up the year uh, I don't expect a lot of risk on plays into the end of the year unless we get some sort of a capitulatory event. And then maybe it might feel more interesting to kind of dip some toes into some really just obliterated stocks or cryptos for for a bounce. You know, I, I, I talked bearishly. We talked a very bearish tone in the market. But let's not forget, there's still – billions and billions and tens of billions of dollars in this market and a lot of that money is still in dead projects and just 
dead money uh, projects with valuations that are still in the billions. So there's enough money in the crypto ecosystem uh, to produce some very big bounces, even in this very bearish environment. So don't don't be kind of stunned or crazed about, you know, seeing that kind of a thing. Um, I've lived through um, two, well, I guess three bull markets and uh, three now I'm in the third bear market, right, of crypto. Uh, so I've been here before. Uh, history does tend to uh, re repeat in some ways and rhyme in some ways. Uh, timing can, you know, be off here and there. Um, but I do feel there'll be opportunity kind of uh, in, in the future of this. I just still think there's too much excess still in this market uh, that needs to get weeded out. And uh, in crypto especially, you think something's down a lot and therefore it's a good value and then it can just drop another 50 or 100% from there. I've seen it before and I expect it to continue to happen again. So just be safe in this environment. There's no need to over leverage your trades. Um, the money can serve because there's always a better time and a more uh, you know practical time to, to trade and put money to work. And in this environment, we keep seeing lower highs and lower lows until uh, that subsides. And there's a feeling that the Fed is now on our side and not against us. Uh, that downward pressure I expect to continue. So I, I as a trader, as an experienced trader, continue to, to practice prudent risk management. And I hope everybody listening to this can do the same. I wish you all the best of luck. And we wish you best of luck. It's great to have Big Jonas in the house. Great to have Phil Boswani. This was a wonderful conversation. I love the fact that I can just hit a button and hear from you. Um, it's easy to misunderstand each other on Twitter and, um, it doesn't make for great, like fun interactions. It kind of, it, cause it's so short, there's no nuance and you, we just end up fighting each other. So, um, I really enjoy doing these spaces. This is number 14, uh, I, that will be uploaded to my YouTube channel, Ched's trading. That's one of those three pinned tweets here on the spaces. If you're listening now on the replay, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. I'm there in the chat room talking to you. Um, hopefully we'll see you folks next time. I am on Twitter at Vic Cheds. I'm on YouTube at Cheds Trading. Start with the tutorial masterclass playlist. Um, I'm the author of Trading Wisdom, which is available on Amazon in four formats, Kindle hardcover, audiobook, and paperback. Back. Um, narrated by me in the audiobook, which is cool. I get the free version of my YouTube channel. Um, my book three is, is going to be published, self-published here on uh, the next couple months. It's a book of trading quotes, one quote for every day. Um, so that's coming out. Look forward to that. And if you want to get serious about TA, you want to learn from a world-class team, join Bitcoin Live. I'm a founding analyst. I've been doing market reports there for four years. I stop twice a week and I do a report no matter what. I haven't missed one in years. So I encourage you to check that out. And uh, thanks for hanging out. I hope everybody is doing well. I would encourage you to be careful with your trades. No reason to jump in front of a trend. Um, you need to kind of ease into your position, smaller positions, you know, scale in, scale out, break it up into multiple positions and make stop loss management easier. If you get the trade right, you can move some of those stops up, take a little bit of profit, you know, and give yourself a little more flexibility. So focus on flexibility, um, find a way to to manage your risk and hopefully stick around and, and we'll see you next time. So thanks for hanging out and I'll talk to you soon. Big Cheds out. And Phil Boswani and Big Jonas, out. All right, that was great. Thank you, folks. Um, I love these conversations. We This just happened today, which is great. Normally, there's a delay um, when I upload these to the Twitter spaces, but I uploaded this one on the day. It's been about, what is it, a couple weeks uh, since I've done one of these, almost two weeks since my last one. I'll probably do another one in the next few days or next week or so. But that was a great conversation, two hours of kind of a open, ask me anything type of a format. Uh, make sure you watch uh, and listen to all those. Check out the rest of my stuff. Um, folks, I hope you're all doing well out there. Um, I want to say thank you for hanging out with me for a bit. And, um, you know, we'll see you soon, okay? Big Cheds out. <laughs>